When the media left, I was practically alone. I had to think about what had just gone on in the stadium and just what the kids would think when they saw their battered big daddy O stumble in the front door. Yeah. After careful reflection, I had the sudden revelation that maybe I too needed some medical attention. When I walked out the door, the screaming fans were gone. The ambulance was history. Only Masa stayed behind. The bus was gone too. Yeah. The, <laughs> so let me put this in perspective, Conrad. I'm the king of the death match. Mm-hmm. My trophy's gone. Yep. I got a, uh, uh, a Pokari sweat, I believe was the soft drink that cost a hundred yen for Mr. Asano. And now I am told uh, that I will have to walk to the hospital with, uh, Masanari Hori, who's a, you know, a good friend and a super fan, like, uh, uh, quote, just Chris Jericho. Uh, I don't care who you are. If you haven't met Masa, you're not. So, uh, he was, I called him and I, now this hasn't, this hasn't aged well, you know, the native American reference. I called him my Kimosabi. <laughs> yeah. He was Kimosabi to my low ranger. And so I had, uh, you know, Masa, uh, walking me to the hospital, which is like, I think less than a half a mile away, but it's just this, again, it's that surreal nature that you are the king of the death match. You, if not cheered, at least been appreciated by the majority of those 30,000 people, uh, you're surrounded by media and now you're, you're all alone. Uh, it's just you and Masa going to, uh, the hospital where I believe I have so many injuries that I don't even ask about, uh, my arm because like I, I said earlier, I had forgotten about it. You wrote in your book, I was stitched up in the same room as Terry. He took some stitches in his head and his triceps area was badly burned. I took seven, seven stitches in my hand, nine in my eyebrow, 11 in my head and 14 behind my ear. Once again, I failed to acknowledge the injury to my arm, even though it was now throbbing with pain. When I returned to the section of Tokyo, I phoned home and blatantly lied to Colette by telling her I was fine. Yeah. Hanged up hun, but nothing too serious. Then I had a small (laughs) dinner with Masa. Headed to my room to count my t-shirt money and eat ice cream in bed. Ice cream in bed. Count the money, eat ice cream in bed. It's those little things. Uh, you know, part of the nature of the business, uh, and I've ta- I, I remember, remember having this talk with Becky Lynch, is that feeling of, you know, an enormous accomplishment and then having no one to share it with. Uh, some guys go out. Uh, you know, and celebrate. And I, I kind of, I'm kind of like that post-match solitude though. I, you know, I wish I had a loved one and I, and I, if I didn't talk about it yet on the show, I, I know I mentioned it and, uh, uh, I think I mentioned Foley is good that after I had my last match with Hunter, you know, I went back to my room and I cried, um, because it was all over because I had no one to share it with. And, uh, I do remember talking with Becky about that you know, the highs and lows. Um, and I think it's a healthy part. I'm not saying, you know, I, I don't want people to feel bad for me because I value those times, you know, <laughs> counting my money and eating ice cream in bed, uh, or, you know, crying in uh, my room after, you know, I honestly believe my career was gone, but it was this surreal thing where I'm the king of the death match. I get the soft drink. I have the trophy that I never see again. I'm getting stitched up. I failed to mention the most, ser- probably the most serious of the injuries, which I won't actually know is serious until the next day. And then, uh, you know, I walk to the hospital and, uh, I'm in a little hotel room by myself at the end of the tour. 